Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video I have something rather special. So in this video I'm going to be painting a 3D printed version of Leon Kennedy but this version is going to be the Resident Evil 4 version. Now although there is no Resident Evil 4 game I'm going to be using this one as an alternative costume for my Leon Kennedy and my Resident Evil 2 games. So this is going to be a cool little different uh, way of painting. Now for the skin I'm going to go down the route of using the Citadel set. So we're going to go and use the citadel uh, paints to do all of his skin tones so we're going to start with the cadian flesh tone which is a nice uh sort of base kind of ready kind of skin color and then we're just going to paint this just across the face and just across uh the sort of hands as well although leon is wearing gloves uh, it is just his fingers and thumbs that are poking through just like so so we're just going to base those and make sure that those are painted as well once we've done the base color for his skin, we're then going to move on to black. And we're going to paint all of the areas of Leon that uh, would be normally sort of covered in black. So there's going to be a lot of areas that we're going to prep and prepare ourselves for. So we're going to paint across his shirt on the inside, uh, just across all of his trousers, his boots, and also his gloves as well. So just being very careful not to get this across uh, the skin, although it doesn't matter hugely at the moment because we are at the very basic stage, so we can fix things if we make some mistakes. So don't worry too much if you make a mistake. It's not the end of the world. Things are easily fixable. So yeah, we're just going to paint across all of those areas that we want uh, black. And then we're going to build up those areas, those tones and those colors a little bit later on. This is just preparing ourselves and preparing those layers uh, just for uh, extra work a little bit later. Just trying to be careful around the fingers though. Although we can bring the fingers back, um, just want to try to make sure that I don't paint too much over them. And then darken them down and so on and so on. So we're just going to to build all of this black up as you can see just like so and there we go once that's done then we're going to use one of my channel favorites which is the dark rust 302 this is a really nice dark brown color um, you could use a citadel dryad bark instead if you like that would do exactly the same thing it's a very very similar sort of color and that's all we're going to do is just cover all of his jacket with this color and i'm also going to cover all of his hair with this as well so this is a nice dark dark brown color this gives us a really good platform to build tones and build color up from and this might seem a little bit too dark to begin with for uh, his uh, coat or his jacket but as we build this up uh, you will see that this is going to create a really really great tone and a really great looking color um, which suits uh, leon's jacket uh, type sort of down to the ground so as we go again just trying to be careful with this layer just trying not to get this over the hands and things like that especially in the underneath of the arm and around uh, the inside of the jacket just there and like i say just painting this around the hair as well just trying to be careful again not to get this over his face and areas that we painted using uh the, with the skin color so just like so just using the tip of the brush just to kind of catch around the very edges of his hair so this is a really cool little model from um, a little 3D printer called Volts Miniatures. Um, and I'll put a link in the description below as to where you can find this uh, model. So if you've got a 3D printer of your own, uh, this is a really cool sort of model that you can print at home that would add to your uh, Resident Evil games. If you don't have a 3D printer at home, I'm quite sure you should be able to find a way of purchasing this somewhere online. So what I'm going to use then is I'm going to go on with Skeleton Bone and we're going to paint all around these edges that are going to be this sort of creamy white sort of bony colour. I'm just going to paint all around the edges, the, the, the fluffy sort of parts of the coat, so just across around the neck area, just around uh, the bottom area and there's also a little bit around the cuffs as well, just around the hands. I'm going to try to be as careful as possible not to get this on the brown, but it doesn't matter too much because again, we're still at the early stages, so this is something that we can fix if we need to. Um, it is difficult just to paint some of these little bits because they are very, very, very small, um, but yeah, just going to try to be as careful as possible and just cover over certain areas, uh, just covering over all of those areas of the coat just on the outside. So once that's done then, I'm also going to use a small amount of gun metal. So this is a nice dark, dark silver colour. And that's all I'm going to do with this one is just try to paint uh, sort of the zip area of his coat. So as you can see, just across the very edge of the inside, we have this sort of uh, zip inlay. So we have this kind of zip colour. So I'm just going to paint this using the silver just to kind of give this a little bit of a metallic tinge just around the edge, just to kind of make it look like... Um, his coat has got a zip and, and the zip is just catching the light on times and things like that. 
here we go just trying to be very very careful again using the very very tip of the brush uh, as much as possible now if you'd like you can add a little bit of the silver onto some of the straps and things i'm not going to because i'm going to try to keep certain things black so i'm going to try to uh, not add so much onto it and once that's done then i'm going to use a soft tone color from uh, the army painter this is a great wash this is a great sort of um shade color this has a very very light brown tinge to it so it doesn't darken the model down too much but it just adds a real good sort of brown kind of um like i say this, this sort of tinge to it this can be used on multiple sort of areas of the model so across the cream areas across the brown coat across the hair and you can also use it across the skin as well so across the face because it's not such a dark dark color um, it doesn't over um, bear the model either now as you can see I'm using that in my palette so therefore I do have a little bit of water in with it which allows it not to um, pool too extreme this gives it a little bit more control and allows me to sort of control the level of um, darkness or shade that comes with it by adding a little bit of water into it, it just creates this really nice light brown kind of color and, and this really sort of nice light brown effect without going too extreme and without uh, darkening the model and creating this dark dark brown or dingy sort of tone this is how we're able to use it on things like the skin because it's not going to darken things down too much now once our last dry we're going to use a cadium flesh tone and a kislev flesh using 50 50 so just one blob of each and just mixing that with a little bit of water here into the palette and then we're going to slowly build uh, the uh, sort of details and the character and the skin tones just back up i'm going to start here by just painting the fingers on the thumbs just to kind of give you an idea as to the detail and then we're just going to go in and do the same thing just around the face so the nose the forehead the cheekbone you know if you've seen me painting models on here before you'll know that this is sort of the easiest way that um or, or sort of the way that i enjoy to paint models it's all about allowing the wash to sit in those recesses around the face so that it just gives you that little bit of shadow and then you get to sort of build up where the light source is going to be so you kind of get the opportunity to build up the light on his forehead and nose and things like that now once that's dry we're going to use the kislev flesh on its own and again just on the palette with a little bit of water as you can see and we're just going to slowly build that up again so just going around the nose the forehead the cheekbones the fingers things like that and again just controlling where we want our light source to be now the cool thing by adding a little bit of water to this as well is by creating these thin layers it gives you the opportunity to build these layers up uh, a couple of times so you can use this uh, sort of thin layer of kislev flesh twice three four times to get to that vibrancy um, and that blend that you really really are comfortable and happy with the last thing you want to do especially on models as small as this and where the face is quite small like this is add a big big blob of color onto the face and then lose all of that detail so using the very tip of the brush and a nice thin down paint will give you a lot more control once that's done then i'm going to add the kislev flesh and a small amount of flayed on flesh and then we're going to mix those together with a little bit of water and again this is just 50 50 so this is a blob of each so 50 50 so one blob of each paint and again using the very tip of the brush we're going to go back into that face and just pick out some of the light and some of the details just across the nose the cheekbones and once again across the forehead as well now this might look a little bit messy at the moment but as this sort of dries down and blends together this is going to create a really cool really uh, sort of fluid and smooth skin tone so it always looks a little bit worse as you're painting and then after a day or two once it's had proper time to dry down and you put your matte varnish across the top it ties those colors together quite nicely from there then we're going to use the dark rust 302 and a uh, small amount of beastie brown um, and I'm just going to add a small blob. So this is going to be sort of uh, two. Uh, so as you can see there, we've got one of each. So a blob of each. So this is going to be a 50-50 again. And as you can see, I'm just adding a little bit of water just around the side. And there we go. Just blending this together using my blending brush. Just like so. And there we go. Once that is there, then we're just going to pick out a little bit of that paint. And then we're going to start to pick out and start to build up all of those details across the coat. So what we're going to do here is we're going to follow the dynamic sort of pose of the model. As you can see, Leon is kind of leaning in with his pistol held high. And because of that, the print and the sculpt of the model has all of these different sort of... Um, as you can see, all these different folds and creases and things like that through the coat where he's kind of leaning to one side, which is great. So this gives us a platform to build using our brush strokes. So what we're going to do is using the very tip of our brush, we're going to build all of those brush strokes up following 
the uh, the direction of the coat. So you can see this is really creating this um, illusion of folds and, and the highlight then while we are leaving the, the, the sort of shade sat in those recessed areas because the shade has this sort of light brown uh, tone to it. It gives us this two-tone kind of effect on the brown, which is creating that cool looking leather jacket kind of effect. And as we slowly build this up, you'll kind of see this start to take shape of this really cool leather sort of color as well. And again, don't worry too much because some parts of the paint may seem a little shiny at the moment. It may look like some of the bits in the recessed areas are shiny and some of the bits that are higher up aren't. And that's all to do with, um, you know, certain paints being thinned and washes being thinned and things like that. So once you put your matte varnish on top at the very end, it ties all of those colors together in a really, really, really nice way. So yeah, it means that all of those different tones and colors will come together quite nicely. So don't worry too much if you've got uh, some areas that are light, uh, that, that might seem shiny and some areas that aren't. Put matte varnish on top and it will, it will fix everything, I promise. So once that's done, then we're going to use the Beastie Brown on its own. And as you can see, I've added quite a bit of water to this one just to kind of uh, create a nice, thin, very sort of um, smooth layer for this one. And we're just going to use the very tip of the brush. And while this is nice and thin and this is thinned down quite evenly, we're just going to slowly build that texture, build that color and build that sort of um, highlight and contrast up across the coat. And as you can see, I'm using my brush strokes now to really follow the positioning of that coat and really follow the way that the light is coming across that coat and the way that that coat is sort of turning and moving with the pose of the miniature. So that's all I'm doing is just following the miniature and following the model. And it does look like this color is a little bit bright or a little bit too bright, but that's just because at the moment it's wet. As it dries down, it will dry down darker. So always remember when you're applying paints, uh, when they uh, sit on the model, at first they look lighter but they do dry down darker so don't worry too much um, and also the other good thing by using these thin layers it allows us to build that vibrance and build that um build that contrast as much as we would like to so we can go over two three four layers as many as you like and as you can see that's all i'm doing here is just slowly building this vibrance through those brush strokes and it's really creating this really great sort of texture, this really great leather color. And it's giving us that real multiple tone color as well between being that really dark brown base to this nice light beastie brown color. Once that's done, then we're going to use the German Grey. So I've used this quite a lot on the channel, and this is another one of my favorite colors. This is a very, very dark gray, but although it's a very, very dark gray, it is also uh, has this sort of bluish tinge to it. So it has a very, very light sort of... Um, a very subtle blue color, this very subtle blue tone to it. And that's all we're gonna do is just paint this across the folds and creases of his trousers. Now, whereas we painted these black already, the black then is gonna be our base tone. So we don't need to add a wash on top because black is already black, right? So instead of worrying about the wash and things on the trousers, that's all we're gonna do is exactly the same thing as what we did with the, the jacket, but this time without worrying about the wash. So we're just gonna paint this bluish dark gray just across the top of all of those folds while leaving the black sitting in all of those folded areas. And this is gonna create this subtle blue hint to it. And that's what we want because we want this uh, model to have these sort of lightish, um, sorry, this very dark, dark gray color but not everything that you see is black. So we don't want him to have just plain flat black trousers. We kind of want to build up so that it gives it this little bit of a subtle blue tone. And that then is giving your eyes something else to look at. It looks a lot more natural. It looks a lot more uh, unique and it looks really, really cool on the model as well. It's something that will add to that kind of uh, depth, um, that illusion that there's a little bit more to the model than just black trousers as well. So that's why I like to use these sort of dark, dark gray tones. So from there, I'm going to use a small amount of anthracite gray mixed in with this. So this is from AK Interactive. So this is the German gray and the anthracite gray together. And this is creating a little bit more of a blue boost. So this is creating a little bit more of a, a blue tone and a blue color. Now, again, I watered this down quite a bit. So this is created into a little bit more of a glaze. What that means is the paint is very, very, very thin. And because of that, when I place this on a model, it will take, you know, 
four, five, six layers before you even see uh, the, the, the sort of main color differences. And the reason why we want to do that again is because we don't want to overload the model with blue. We want to have these subtle blue tinges to it, yes, but we don't want to overload it and we don't want it to be uh, black trousers with a blue highlight. You know, we, we kind of want these black trousers with a very subtle hint of blue. So that creates this really cool tone. You can already see the difference that that blue has had on the trousers versus his uh, his shirt you know his shirt is still black whereas these trousers then are looking really sort of subtly gray blue with black tinges and that creates a lot more uh, a, a much more pleasing look on your eye and a much more interesting model to look at than something that is just covered all in black so yeah, as we go, this is how we are just going to build up all of these layers. So I'm also going to add an optional layer. So this is a Riley Gray. This is, again, a very thin uh, layer. As you can see, I'm using very, very thin paints uh, just down in the corner. And this is a much more blue gray. And you'll notice that when I place this onto the model, there's a little bit more blue to it. But because this paint is so, so thin, this isn't going to take over the model. Like I said, we kind of glazing this paint on. And that's all we're doing is catching this in certain little areas, just like so we're not overloading the model we're not going crazy with blues or anything like that we're just kind of adding a few little subtle hints that kind of create the illusion that the light is catching on the front of his trousers but not so much on the underneath of his trousers and this is giving us this real great control as to where the light source is and things like that and you can see that just by me catching the tops of those folds and creases just like so just like so so this is a really cool, interesting model to paint because I've never painted sort of um, Leon before in this sort of way. I've never painted the Res 4 version of him um, and things like that. So yeah, I thought it would be quite cool because it's still a little retro, even though the new game has come out and things like that. Um, it's still a little retro because I, again, being as old as I am, remember playing the originals and all things like that, you know. So that's all I'm going to do then is add a little bit of necro grey just across the top. Necro grey is a very dark, dark grey. It's very sort of blackish grey almost. So this gives us a real dark, dark colour across the top as well. It still ties things in with these grey tones um, and takes away from the top just being a flat black colour. Um, but it also then allows us to have um, a little bit of a cohesion with these greys and things like that. So you'll have to let me know uh, in the comments if you like this version of Leon, if you think that this version that I'm painting is quite cool, if you like the 3D print that I've managed to, to print at home, um, if this is something that you would uh, print out yourself at home. You have to also let me know whether you prefer this version or if you prefer the Res 2 version. Now, I know that's a really, really big ask because both versions are fantastic. Uh, but you'll have to let me know which one you prefer or even which one of the Resident Evil games was your favorite. Now, for me, personally, being old fashioned, being an old guy, um, I much prefer the older ones because I remember them coming out. They have a lot more nostalgia for me and I like the fixed camera angles and all of these different things. Although I know a lot of people that will prefer the newer version. So you guys will have to let me know which one you prefer. So to make his hair a little bit different, stand out and also stick with the brown kind of colors, I'm adding a small amount of coconut copper into this just to give his hair a little bit of a coppery tinge and to allow it to still be brown, but not be the same color brown as the jacket and things so that it means that his hair and his coat are slightly different and it adds a little bit of color. Once that's done, I'm going to use a small amount of silver grey. If you don't have silver grey, you could use something like an off-white colour, and that will also do the trick. And that's all I'm going to do with the silver grey, uh, this sort of off-white, is just paint this across the very edge of his pistol. And the reason why I'm painting this across the very edge of his pistol and across a little bit of the, um, the sort of... Um, holster for his gun is just to kind of create a little bit of a light source across that black because we've got a few things on here that are a little bit just flat black and adding a little bit of white just as an edge highlight almost just to create the illusion that there's a little bit of light just catching on the very edge as you can see just across these clips and a little bit across the belt buckle here just giving it that subtle, subtle hint. Something very, very simple, nice and easy. We're not going too extreme. We're not dry brushing it crazy. But just a little bit of a hint of light source just catching on the weapon, just like so. And there we go. 
And there you go, once all of that is done, my Leon Resident Evil 4 version looks as cool as this. You'll have to let me know, as I say in the comment section, if you like this video, if you prefer this version of Leon to the other one. Um, also, as I say, I'll drop a link to the 3D sculptor in the description below. So if you want to uh, go and have a look and print it out yourself. So yeah, let me know what you think of this one. Uh, let me know if you like my painting, if you think it stays true to Leon from Res 4. Um, and as always, my friends, thank you so, so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for everything you do, all of your positivity, your comments, your likes, everything. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Please take care of yourselves and I'll see you all on the next one.